there are many things that are happening in our society today that are not supporting the optimal development of the human brain. And so if a child is in an environment that doesn't support the optimal functioning, there may be areas that put their brain at risk. So there are basically two pathways. You can either be following the pathway of survival or the pathway of wellness. The goal, obviously, is the pathway of wellness, except the statistics are nationally that somewhere between 51 to 83 percent of children and families today are living in survival. How do you begin to build that bridge? What are the components of the environment that support optimal functioning and overcome the risks? How is a child's brain at risk? What creates that? Well, anything that's a stressor for the child puts the child's brain at risk because stress generates cortisol. Cortisol is the fight or flight hormone. If you're a fighter, um, you will either take on a coping style of a troublemaker or you will take on the coping style of a mascot. The troublemaker generally is the child or adult who would be described by others as being angry, defiant, aggressive, hostile. But they're also at risk for things like school retention and failure, dropout. The mascot generally is a child who we would describe as being the class clown. They're the children that use humor to cover up all of the pain and all of the stress that they're experiencing. Oftentimes you'll find that those children have a high level of impulsivity to them. They also tend to be children that are very, um, what we would describe as attention seeking. Uh, the risk is that those children um, in their impulsivity often get referred for either counseling or special education. Or they are children that socially may suffer because other kids will stop hanging out with them because by association, um, I get in trouble because of your impulsivity even though I haven't done anything. Uh, and those that would flight would be people that would have either what we call the invisible child coping style or would have the super kid or the martyr style. So the, the invisible child are the children that oftentimes we describe as the best students. They're like the perfect student. They're the kids that never want to create any waves. Quieter kids um, spend a lot of time by themselves, loners by choice. Um, the challenge of that is, so I've gone unnoticed. My needs have gone unnoticed for so long because I'm the invisible kid. I don't create waves for people. I just suffer in my silence, but eventually there's a time when that surfaces, and when it does, it's in a way that says, everybody will now notice me. Um, the martyr or the super kid is the child, oftentimes, that um, would be described as being very prone to wanting things perfect. They're overly compliant children. They do things before you even ask them and then say, I did this for you, are you so proud of me? The challenge for those children is that if they stay in this survival or risk mode for too long, they're the children that eventually will develop things like eating disorders, depression and suicide, addictions to amphetamines, because it takes a lot of energy to keep up a perfect world. So there's, th those are brains at risk. Like all of us have stress in our life and we have coping skills, but not all of us live a life of coping. Coping has not become a lifestyle. But when children's brains are at risk, coping is their lifestyle.